So you want to learn how to play Dead by Daylight Mobile. Whether you're new to the series or if you just need a little bit of help to get you on your way, by the end of today's video, I'll be showing you guys not only how to survive in the fog, but to thrive in it. What's up guys, my name is Bryce, and today I'm going to show you how to play Dead by Daylight Mobile with the Ultimate Beginner Guide Tutorial. Whether you play Dead by Daylight on a different platform, or if you're playing Dead by Daylight Mobile for the very first time, there's something for everyone in this video. But before we start, I wanna say a quick thank you to Dead by Daylight Mobile for actually sponsoring this video. And if you guys wanna check out the game for yourselves and for free, make sure you guys use the link in the description down below so that you can show off all the skills you learn in this video. So if you've never played this game before, Dead by Daylight is an asymmetrical horror game where four survivors are trying to escape a bloodthirsty killer, all while the killer is trying their best to hunt them down. The survivors win if they escape, and the killer wins by slashing, hooking, and sacrificing their prey to the entity. And while this may seem pretty simple at first glance, there's a few things you need to know before you hop into your first game. When you first make an account on Dead by Daylight Mobile, you're given the chance to learn the basics of the game by playing both the survivor and killer tutorials. I highly suggest playing each of these as it'll help familiarize you with both the gameplay and the controls for each side. It'll also unlock a free killer and a survivor for you to play on your DVD mobile journey. If you miss the tutorials or if you just need a refresher, you can always replay them at any point by using the settings tab in the main menu. And while these tutorials are great for learning the basics, it's time to go a bit more in depth on how to play both survivor and killer. Now as a survivor, your main goal is simple. Don't die. And while that is a pretty simplistic goal, it's easier said than done. In every trial, the four survivors must work together to complete five generators and open the exit gate to escape, all while trying to avoid the killer. To do this, survivors must explore the realm to find and repair generators scattered around the map. And while they can be difficult to find, a great tip is to look for the floodlights towering above the generator. This can be used to spot generators from a long distance away and only in the mobile version you can also find generators by using the visual prompts that appear on the screen when you're close to a generator with a bit of progress. Once you've found a generator, it's time to get to work. By holding the repair button, your character will begin the process of fixing the generator. But don't get too comfortable, as generators occasionally have skill checks that require you to time a button press to continue repairing the generator. If you fail, the generator will lose precious progress and alert the killer to your location. To avoid this, be on the lookout for the sound cues that happen right before the skill check to make sure you don't get caught. You'll know when a killer gets close when your heartbeat starts to increase and your heart becomes visible inside of your character. This means you're within the killer's terror radius and that death isn't far behind. Keep in mind, not all killers have a terror radius, so don't forget to keep an eye out for the sneaky killers. Oh hey! If you do get caught, don't panic. Killers are faster than survivors, but you still have a chance to escape by using the various objects around the map. While every map is different, the two best tools you can use to run from your new murderous friends are vaults and pallets. Vaults are window-like structures found in different parts of the map that allow survivors to quickly jump over them to escape the killer. And while killers can also move through these windows, they do so at a much slower rate. Pallets, on the other hand, are large pieces of wood that survivors can throw behind them to block the killer's path, and if the killer's close enough, it can also be used to stun them. Not cool. Once a pallet is thrown, a survivor can then use them as a temporary vault location. But don't get too comfortable, as killers can smash these at any point after they're thrown. There's also a limited number of pallets per map, so make sure you only drop the pallets when you really need them, as they're crucial to escaping the killer and buying your team precious time. If a killer does manage to slice you, don't give up. You can be hit two times before your character falls victim to your pursuer. And if you do get hit, you even get a little speed boost that gives your character one last shot at escape. Once a survivor is down, the killer then has to take them to a hook to begin their sacrifice. While on the hook, a timer appears above your character showing how much time you have to live. During that time, you can either hang out and wait for your friends to save you or take the chance to escape using the button on the screen. And while it can be very tempting to hit the shiny button, more often than not, it's not the best idea. As you can see on the screen, you have a 4% chance to escape by hitting the button, but if you fail, you lose a large percentage of your remaining time. So it's up to you if the risk is worth the reward. Hooray! 
The timers on these hooks have two different variations. For the first 50%, you can chill and wait for a friend to save you, or you can decide to risk it all. But for the second 50%, the entity will begin to attack, and you'll start getting increasingly difficult skill checks as you try to resist your demise. If you do miss a skill check, your character's strength will falter, and you'll get even closer to your doom. If the timer completely runs out, it's game over. But on the more optimistic side, if you get saved, you can rejoin your friends and attempt to escape your brutal fate. Assuming the other survivors save you, you can be hooked up to three times before you die, so definitely don't forget to save your teammates. Another important part of being a survivor is knowing how to heal. If you save a survivor off the hook, or if you find an injured friend on the map, you can heal them to full health by pressing the heal button. This will trigger more skill checks, just like repairing a generator, but make sure you don't miss any of those skill checks or the killer will be alerted to your position. If you follow all of that advice and you find that you're still alive when the fifth generator is finished, your final goal is to open the exit gate and escape. To find these doors, pay attention to the two red prompts that appear on the screen showing both gate locations. And if you ever get lost, a nice tip is to look for the highest sections of the outside walls, as they're often the locations of your escape. Once you make it to the door, you have one final objective to complete before you can escape. You need to power the door by holding down the lever until the bar is completely full. Be aware that the gates do make quite a bit of noise, so don't forget to keep looking for the killer. Once the bar is completely finished, the door will open and the end game collapse will begin. If a survivor still hasn't escaped by the end of this period of time, they will be instantly killed by the entity. So make sure you escape as soon as you can. If you're the final survivor in the game because your friends have escaped through the door or by that giant tentacle monster in the sky, you still have one more option to escape known as the hatch. This escape hatch can spawn anywhere on the map, but it can be very difficult to find. It'll give you one final hope of escaping your killer, but only if you make it to it first. Personally, I find it a lot easier to listen for the hatch rather than to look for it. So if you find yourself alone, be sure to keep your ears open to stay alive. So in summary, if you want to be a good survivor in Dead by Daylight Mobile, don't die lol. Now on the killer side, your job is even easier than the survivors. You just have to kill everyone. And while murder is easy enough, the killer is racing against the survivors to finish the job before they can get the chance to escape. At the start of the trial, the killer starts all alone and needs to track down the survivors so they can start hunting them down. A great tip to find survivors early is to immediately run to the opposite side of the map, as survivors tend to spawn as far away from the killer as possible. And while maps can feel large, killers have a few ways to help track down their prey. Firstly, killers can see all unfinished generators at all times. This allows killers to protect them from those pesky survivors and to give you good ideas of where the survivors are going to be. Secondly, you can see anytime a skill check is failed with a visual and audio indicator to show you where survivors are, and it'll also do this anytime survivors drop a pallet or fast vault a window. And lastly, killers can also sense the scratch marks of survivors. These marks are left behind careless survivors when they run and can easily give away players who don't walk or crouch. These can only be seen by the killer and not by the survivor at all, and they only show up if the survivor is running. So don't forget about this while you're playing survivor as well to make sure that you don't get caught. Once you have a survivor in your sight, the hunt truly begins. Chase down survivors by following their scratch marks, and once you're close enough, you can use a basic attack to slice up the opposition and take them down. As I mentioned earlier, it takes two basic attacks to down a survivor at full health, so don't be afraid to target injured survivors for an easy down. Once you down them, now all you need to do is pick them up and place them on a hook. But don't get distracted, as a survivor can wiggle free if you take too long. Once the survivor is hooked, it's only a matter of time until either they die or they're saved by their friends. Be sure to take this time to search for other survivors so that you can kill them all. Now, while all survivors are pretty much the same, the thing that I absolutely love about killers is that while they all have a basic attack, every killer has their own unique powers. There's the trapper who can place bear traps to trap survivors, the hillbilly with a chainsaw that can one-shot them, the wraith who can turn invisible and move at fast speeds, and even the nurse who can teleport to catch survivors 
drivers in an instant. And while these powers are really awesome, there are still 15 more killers and counting that you can use to find your preferred killing style. Some are easier than others, but you'll definitely want to try them all. Speaking of, a great way to get new characters is by completing challenges. When you first start the game, you have beginner challenges that you can complete to unlock new characters, as well as daily and weekly challenges that can reward tons of amazing loot, including currency to purchase new survivors and killers, as well as 24-hour trials for characters you don't own yet. Another great feature is that Dead by Daylight Mobile also allows you to try out a newer rotation of free trial characters every single day so you can find your new favorites and decide who you want to unlock next. A great reason to unlock new characters is that every character has different perks. Up to four perks can be equipped by every killer and survivor and you can use them to get an advantage over the competition. You can get new perks by leveling up by either playing your favorite character or by using special items that you can find in the blood market to level up quickly. In the blood market, you can spend the points that you earn by participating in games to get upgrades for your killers and survivors. The store has two sides, one for each team, so make sure that you're on the correct side while you're shopping. On the killer side, you can find different add-ons to make your killer powers stronger, while on the survivor side, you can find different items that can aid you against the killer. These items include a med kit, which allows you to heal yourself, a toolbox, which allows you to break hooks and do generators faster, a flashlight, which allows you to blind the killer and save survivors, a map, which allows you to track different items and sometimes even the killer. And last but not least, we've got a key that allows you to open the hatch early. Personally, I absolutely love going for a med kit so I can heal myself at any point during a match, so I always try to go for those when I see them. But whatever item you choose, don't forget to equip it and the perks that you have in the main menu before you hop into a match. Now that you know the basics, it's time for you to play your very first match. In the bottom right of the main menu, you can choose what type of mode you'd like to play. The three options include a ranked match, which allows you to play against other players of your skill level, quick match, which throws you into a more casual match, and custom games, where you can either play with your friends or practice against bots. If you're brand new to this, I would highly suggest practicing for a few games against the bots in custom games to make sure you get a good feel for the game and it's also a great place to test your perks, items, and new killers to see who and what you like the best. And as these are just robots, there's absolutely no judgment while you get a feel for the game. I often use this to try to figure out which builds I want to use the most while I play so I definitely recommend it to you guys as well. After a few matches of this, you'll have it down and you'll be ready to hop into your first real game. If you're playing killer, you'll have to go it alone, but if you're playing a survivor, this game is definitely more fun when you play with friends. Be sure to send your friends this video and ask them to download it, but even if your friends aren't available, you can make new friends by using the in-game chat to find other people just like you looking for a party. Before you know it, you might even have the best squad around. That said, while there's still a lot more to learn about Dead by Daylight Mobile, you should now know the basics and be ready for your first rounds of Killer and Survivor. I'm currently in the process of making a more in-depth guide for both Killer and Survivor, where I'll explain the best characters and perks to choose. So if you guys have any questions on how to improve your gameplay, or if you want me to elaborate on anything, let me know in the comments down below, and I'll try my best to answer them in those videos. Videos. If this guide helped you, be sure to leave a like as well and make sure you guys subscribe as I play Dead by Daylight Mobile with my YouTube subscribers during my live streams. And thanks again to Dead by Daylight Mobile for sponsoring this video and allowing me to make the ultimate beginner's guide to DVD Mobile. And I can't wait to see you guys in the fog.